It's not an outcome you normally hear about in the late stages of cancer. And he got into the stage where he couldn't turn his head. The pain was, was excruciating and, and obviously this tumor was rapidly growing. You see after several weeks that it, it completely resolved and he had a really, a really great response with the tumor. So it, it didn't just put it in remission, it killed it. It killed it off. It is a virus. Hundreds of millions of particles of it flooding the affected patient's body or, as in this case, being directly injected into the tumor, hunting down cancer and destroying it. So it's just down the hall this just way. Just around here? Yeah, yeah, just around the corner. For Dr. John Bell, it's been a lifetime journey. And so this is where the ideas come up. Down the corridor, past the labs where PhD and master's students design and build viruses. It's like a little bomb site, so where the virus hits, then yeah. goes out like that. 30 years of his career, arriving at a place where, right here in this lab at Ottawa Hospital, they can produce what they are thinking could be a breakthrough, biological viral warfare against cancer. Is this the most exciting development you've seen? We're certainly seeing a lot of excitement because patients who previously had no chance to survive some of them are starting to see responses, and that just hasn't been seen before. And so you see a large tumor here. Here's another case. This is a patient from Hamilton. And here's a, a full body scan. And again, the tumor's here and here, uh, and then afterwards they're, they're gone. For over a hundred years, scientists have known something happens when some viruses and cancer interact. As early as 1904, doctors treating leukemia patients observe they would go into remission after an infection or contracting the flu. It's also been known that some viruses can cause cancer. But it's taken until now to really understand their molecular structure, to find a way to use viruses as a tool that seem to be able to infiltrate tumors and kill them. The world's first clinical trial for a new type of cancer therapy is certainly something to celebrate. When the Ottawa Hospital announced the start of these trials last summer, it was with much hope, not only from the doctors who have developed this treatment, but from participants like cancer patient Christina Monker, a former nurse, a mother, and grandmother. I'm very glad that I had the opportunity to participate in this trial because I know that it may contribute to better therapies that could help other people, including possible my children and grandchildren. So how big exactly is a Brazilian sandfly? Are they almost microscopic? Are they little teeny things? Well, I'm no expert, but yeah. Dr. David Schoidel, one of Dr. Bell's partners, is an expert at identifying the viruses that may have the best chance to attack cancerous tumors. The one going through clinical trials now, believe it or not, was found living in the Brazilian sandfly. So we went through hundreds and hundreds of documented cases of virus infections and identifications of virus and whittle those down to a list that we could handle that had sort of the properties we thought would be interesting. They have tested several, as have others around the world, but the one they are banking on now is the Maraba virus. What makes it interesting is it's believed benign to humans and now it's modified to only seek out a wide spectrum of cancer cells and attack. At least that's the theory. Animal trials showed lots of promise. And the animal is extremely exciting. I mean, we saw uh, two things I think that made me really excited. One was that, in fact, in some animals, we got cures very rapidly, depending upon the kind of cancer they had or the tumor that they had. And in other ones, which we didn't have, see a good response initially, by re-engineering the virus to become uh, more of an immune stimulator, we now saw non-responsive tumors become responsive. But in this human clinical trial, something that makes it unique. <coughs> a second virus, this one from the common cold, is also used to boost the patient's own immune system to respond, a response they think will last. The first part of the job is done by the virus. It goes in and attacks the cancer and causes a lot of havoc within the tumor. But the really long-term benefit comes from the fact that the immune system gets activated and then it also attacks the cancer and then hangs around for the rest of the patient's life to keep the cancer at bay. It's really viruses. Both doctors know the public has waited a long time 
and spent billions hoping for some version of a cure. So these are actual cancer cells. Yeah. And their search for an even better virus to attack cancer will continue. But as Dr. Bell put it, we are closer now than we have ever been. Do you think you're going to be around to say we've got it? I'm hoping to, you know, we hit by a bus, one never knows, but I think the time frame is such that it's possible that we'll see in the next uh, five to 10 years, a lot of people having great responses to this, these new biological therapies. Won't that be something? It would be amazing. You know, I mean, we've seen for a long time, all of us have a family members who've experienced this disease and the treatments, and uh, we work in a cancer clinic. It'd be great to be able to say, you know, it doesn't have to be the same way. Yeah, we can change things. Won't that be something indeed? the liver here and the tumor hanging off the end and ultimately it disappears. Red Sharon, CBC News, Ottawa.